Hello, you wonderful people. In this video, we're going to talk about Strapi 4 to Strapi 5 migration, and I'm going to show you what are the steps that entail migrating your project. And we're going to test these steps using our corporate starter. This is something we built with Strapi 4 with Next.js 14. So in this video, we're going to pull this code down and walk through the steps that will help us to migrate Strapi 4 to Strapi 5, as well as some of the things to consider and some caveats. This is also based on a blog post that I already wrote that you could check out here, but we're gonna go through the steps as well. By the end of this video, you should have a general idea of what the migration process looks like and where to go next. So let's jump right into it. We are going to start in the repo by pulling the code. I have GitHub CLI installed, so I'm gonna use this command, but you could use HTTPS and just do git clone. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this command. And in my terminal, I already have a directory called migration where I'm able to go ahead and clone my project. Once the project is done, we could do ls. So let's go ahead and change directories into our project directory. And we're going to run yarn setup, which is a script that I have that's going to install all the dependencies, both for the front and backend. So for our Next.js project and our Strapi project. Once everything is completed, let's open our project in VS Code. Now, the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to open up our terminal and we're going to CD into our backend. And before we could run our project, if we take a look in our folder, we have our env examples. This is something that we will have to add. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy, create a new file, .env, and I'm going to paste it in. And now we could run yarn develop to start our application. Go ahead and create your first admin user. Once everything's all set, click let's start and we'll be greeted by Strapi4 dashboard. If we take a look at our content manager, we're gonna have all our items, but no actual data. So let's go ahead, seed our data so our website could actually have some data that we could work with. I'm gonna stop my terminal. And once you see the back into the root, you could run yarn seed, which is gonna run a script that's gonna go ahead and import our data. We're gonna say yes. This will delete existing data because we don't have any. That's perfectly fine. And if you're wondering, if you take a look at the package.json file in the root of the file folder, we have some helpful uh, script commands that I created to make working with this project a little bit easier. So when we run yarn seed, it runs yarn strap import command and uses our backup data. Now let's see the back into our backend and run yarn develop again. Once you log in back into your application and go to our content, you're going to see that we have our articles and all of our data present. When creating this, I didn't add any SEO images, so that's why they're missing because this is just on my local computer. But now that we have all the data, let's make sure that our front-end application works. Now our front end expects an API token. So let's navigate to settings, click API token, and let's create a new token. We're gonna to say read all, you could call it whatever you like. I'm gonna select unlimited because this is on my local and we're going to say uh, read only. And this is going to select all the read permissions for all of our collections and content types. So let's go ahead, click save, go ahead and copy the token and now in our project, navigate to your front end folder. You have your env.example um, env file. We want to replace the next public strappy API token. Go ahead and paste it in. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And then what you could do is just uh, rename this to just be your dot dot env file. Now let's open another terminal and we're going to navigate to our front end and we're going to run yarn dev to start our Next.js project. Once our application starts, we could navigate to it and you will see all the data that we have in our project, including the block section that we have here. 
with all the blog content. Now that we know that our Strapi 4 and Next.js project is running, let's quickly discuss the steps you're going to take for the migration and get started. So before migrating your project, we're going to check a few things. Number one, make sure that all of your data is backed up. You can also find our documentation that walks us to the upgrade guide. This is what I have here. So the most important part is make sure that you back up your database. You could also export your data using the DTS. Make sure you have a backup copy of your code just in case something goes wrong. And if you have any plugins that are not compatible with Strapi 5, make sure that you remove them. Once that's all set, we're going to run our migration script. So let's go ahead and first walk through all these steps. In my Strapi project, I already upgraded to the latest Strapi version at the time of this recording, which was 4.25.6. This will make our process much smoother. Taking a look at our package.json file, you see that I am using Strapi plugin SEO. At the time when I was creating this video, this plugin has not yet been migrated, even though now that it has been, I do want to show you that if you do have plugins that are not migrated, go ahead and remove it. And after you removed all the unnecessary plugins, you need to make sure that you also remove the reference. So navigate to your config folder, go to plugins and delete this reference to the plugin. Nice. The final step that I like to do before doing anything, I like to just run rmrf node modules and then remove the yarn lock before running yarn again to reinstall all the dependencies minus all the updates minus the packages that we removed. Now that our project is installed and before running our code mod script that we're going to take a look in just a minute, when it comes to customizations in your code, if you had a plugin that you created, I would recommend migrating your core project first and then handling those individually. So if you had a plugin that you built, make sure you remove it, upgrade your Strapi project first, make sure that it works, and then upgrade the plugins that you have created. Now, if you have custom code in this project, we only have a custom middleware. So if you go to source, API and we take a look at page, we're going to see our middleware. Here's our custom middleware that we wrote that we will talk through in a migration because some things have changed here. But if you had custom controllers or services, and if the code mod automatically wasn't able to migrate them, you would have a to do comment that would be added in your code. And that's something that you would have to do. So the migration script will take you most of the way, but depending on how custom your code is, you might have to do some manual migration as well. But with that being said, we're going to take a look at step two, which is running our automated migration script. And before you do this step, make sure that you save all the changes and create a separate branch for your project where you could do these migrations. So in the root of my project, I'm going to do get branch and I'm going to say active migration. And I'm going to do get checkout active migration. And we're going to do all of our work here first. So that way we could always revert back. By the way, if you haven't backed up your data yet, there's many ways of doing it. You could have an extra copy of your database if you have access to your database, but you could also use Strapi export by running yarn Strapi export, no encrypt if you don't want to encrypt the files and the name of the file and export your data this way. And this is something that I already did in my project. So if you're taking a look here, I have my seeddata.tar.gz file that has all my data for this project. And now that everything is all set and all the plugins have been removed and we upgraded our Strapi version to the latest, Let's go ahead and run our script. And the script you're going to run is npx at strapi slash upgrade major. So I'm going to go ahead and copy. And again, if you're wondering where to find this blog post or our migration documentation that covers the same steps, I will make sure to link him in the description before in the description below. So go ahead and copy the command. Make sure that you are in your strapi backend project and go ahead and run the command. Yes, to continue, this is going to upgrade a project to Strapi's latest, which is 5.3.0.
and I thought I was running the latest and I'm glad that we got here so you could see that at the time of the recording, the latest version of Strapi was actually 4.25.15. And I'm glad that this is something that I missed because you get to see that you do get this uh, message. So this is an easy change. So back in our JSON file, go find all the references to our Strapi version and let's replace it with 4.25.15. Sounds good in our terminal. Let's rerun RM RF node modules just to nuke everything one more time, just to be on the safe side and RM yarn lock. And let's reinstall all the new dependencies. Once everything's all set, let's clear the screen and let's rerun our migration script. This is going to bring us to our next uh, version. Make sure that you save all your changes and start from a clear branch. You could also ignore this, but I think for uh, making sure that you have a branch that you could revert back to makes perfect sense. For my use case, I'm just going to say yes, and it's going to go ahead and run all the changes. You're going to see all the different changes that were updated and where uh, from the log. And once everything is done, it's going to reinstall all the dependencies and rebuild your project. And now that everything is all set, you should be able to run yarn develop. And this is going to start your Strapi project. And here we could see that we're running 5.3.0 with no 20. Let's navigate to our project. And here we could see that we now see the dashboard for Strapi 5, including all of our data that has been migrated for us, which is pretty cool. And if we take a look in our settings, we could see that in fact, we're running Strapi version 5.3.0 which is pretty awesome. And the last thing that I want to show you before we focus on our front end, in my VS Code, I'm going to open up my local database and we're going to go to our SQL Explorer and I'm just going to find data for our pages. And if we run the query, you could see that we now have the new structure of our data. And the reason why I know this, it is because we're now using the newly created document IDs that allow us to use some of the advanced features that we have in Strapi 5 from draft and published to our content history. Awesome. And before we move on to our front end, we are going to get an error and this is due to our custom middleware. So if we make a request to get our homepage, we will get this error saying invalid nested populate for page content section because the way we do our filtering has changed. So. The last final step for us here is to update our page.populate middleware.js file. And here we could see the old query and we now need to use the on flag to populate dynamic zones with components. You could read more about it here in the documentation that shows the example. But for our case, we're going to replace our middleware with this new populate query that should fix the issue. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it. Back in my code, we're going to navigate to our API folder in our Strapi project to pages, our custom middleware inside our middlewares folder. And we're going to go ahead and replace the old populate with the new populate logic, which is using the on flag specified by the section and any additional populate that you want to do. Now that this is done, we're going to restart our project and take a look on the front end. So now I'm going to restart my backend by running yarn develop. And we also going to start our next JS application by running yarn dev in the appropriate folder. Navigating to our front end application, we're going to see this black screen because we do need to make some updates on our front end. Now that our backend migration is done, we're going to move on to the front end. And this is one thing to reconsider when you're going through migration process, this is a good time to think about your front end code, see if there's any things you want to refactor or update. In our case, we use Next.js 14. I know Next 15 is out. This is something that I will update this in the future, but you could make uh, simple edits. And so before getting our front end application to work, I did want to update the way I implemented the fetch API method to do something that's a little bit uh, more straightforward. Let's go ahead and copy this snippet. And more importantly, what's going to make our project work is that in the header, we're able to pass this flag called strappy response format v4. So this is going to go ahead and return our response that 
is equivalent to our v4 strapi response even though we're using strapi and what this is going to do this is going to continue to return the old strapi4 response that your current front-end application is consuming so even though we're running strapi5 we are able to use this flag to say hey please return data in the new format so at least this way we could see that our front-end application is working with our new backend and then continue our migration process from there so in my code not in our strapi project but in our front end project i'm going to navigate to source i'm going to go to app and i'm going to go to my utils folder i'm going to find my fetch that api function and i'm going to replace it with our new code snippet and again the key here being is that we're using the strapi response format in the header to say hey please return the v4 response and because i ended up updating the way our fetch API function works, we need to update the instances to reflect those changes. Instead of passing options like I did before, we're just going to pass the auth token. So navigate to your layout.tsx file and we're going to make the following changes. Let's copy this get global function in the front end of our project in our app folder. Navigate to our layout page and here's our get global function. Let's go ahead and replace it with our new code here. And the difference here is that we just updated how we're passing our params to our fetch API. Perfect. Now, because our get page by slug is also using our fetch API, so let's navigate to our utils get page by slug ts file and add the following snippets. And again, we just changing how we're passing our parameters to our fetch API function. So in utils, get page by slug. So let's go ahead and make our change. And thank goodness for TypeScript, it's telling us that something is changed. Perfect. So now that we have updated this, let's take a look if there's anything else in our code. And now we're using our fetch API function in our page.tsx file. So let's go ahead and make the following change. So navigate to blog page.tsx and here we're going to replace line 41 and 42 with our copied line. And I believe those all the changes that we had to make. So quick overview, I decided that I wanted to update how this function was being handled. Instead of passing options, I simplified it a little bit and just had it to expect auth token because we made changes in this file. Anywhere we were using fetch API, we had to make appropriate changes. Now that this is said and done and we're using the old v4 format, let's run yarn dev to start our next JS application. And now moment of truth, we refresh and boom we have all of our data coming from our Strapi 5 application. Now, I want to show you the way of using the old response header to make sure to show you that, hey, you could do your migration in pieces. You could migrate your backend first and then focus on migrating your Strapi 5 application. So this is what I'm gonna do on my own time. I'm gonna take a moment to update this front end to Next.js 15 and make all the appropriate changes and once that's done, I'm going to finalize the migration by removing the old header. And if you're fine with it, you could keep it. Again, with any time you do a migration, there's a cost of time and money that goes with it. So if you need to wait a little bit, you could just keep using the old uh, format. But if you want to update it, this is something that you could do. So when I migrate this to next 15, I'm then going to migrate the front end to consume the new API. So I hope you found this migration overview helpful. If you have any questions or need any help, we hang out on Strapi's Discord. We have open office hours from Monday through Friday from 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. CST time. So come on by just to chat or ask questions. We'd love to see you there. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.